Bonjour! Today we're going to talk about eating out in France and other French speaking countries. We're going to dive into what it looks like to eat at a restaurant in France and some of the things you should know that may be different to what you're used to as well as what it looks like and the experience of eating at a fast food restaurant. Salut! This is Rochelle DeMeo, your native French instructor at Belter Academy. So first thing to know is that eating out in France is going to be very different, that your experience is going to be different depending on different factors, depending on the location of the restaurant, the location on where it is on a map in France or Switzerland or Belgium, and also it's going to vary on the quality of the restaurants, possibly the reviews that you get. I'm going to tell you where you should get the reviews, which might surprise you as well in today's video, but um, it, it's going to really vary based on those different factors. So at a French restaurant, let's talk about lunchtime or if you really don't have a lot of time. For instance, maybe it's a short lunch break from work, maybe you're just in a rush or you just have like an hour to kill and you wanna get a bite to eat. First thing you wanna do is make sure when you go to a French restaurant that you tell them that you only have an hour and that you need your food done and ask them if that's even possible because some restaurants, they may take a long time to serve you the food and if you don't ask them ahead of time and tell them that you're in a rush, then they're gonna think you're not in a rush and that you have a lot of time. So make sure whatever reason you may be able to only have a short meal, a short lunch, you want to make sure that you inform them of that. Also a little thing with lunches in France is that it wouldn't be uncommon to have a glass of wine or a beer during your lunch break. That's right. So you're not getting trashed obviously, but that would be something common if you're just eating at a restaurant for lunch. So if you're at the restaurant with family or friends, anticipate for the meal to last for hours. Unlike other countries like the United States where it's kind of you go in, go out and sometimes a, a restaurant, sit down restaurant resembles more a fast food than anything. In France, that's not usually the case. Usually when you're at a restaurant, you can pretty much stay as long as you want, which means that meals resemble the meals that you might experience in French homes. If you missed the videos on what it's like to eat in a French person's home and different scenarios that went with that, check out last week's video where I detail that. But when you're eating at a restaurant, you are you may be there for hours. And if you have a celebration, it could be a birthday, a anniversary, a um, engagement, whatever it is, some celebration on a promotion or whatever it is, and you're with friends and family, and even if you're not necessarily celebrating something, usually that meal will last for hours, like in a person's home. And a waiter will not rush you necessarily to order, as sometimes like in the States, what I've noticed having experienced both cultures and being both, is that you definitely feel more rushed in a restaurant in the States, whereas in France, they don't rush you, but on the flip side, you have to call the waiter or waitress. S'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. I'm not gonna come and check on you after every little bite you're like barely eating, and as you're eating, they're like, hey, is the food here? Like, dude, it's my first bite. How can I know if the food is good or not? Ça bien? Oui, merci. Vous avez besoin d'autre chose? Non, merci. It's gonna be, they let you eat, and if you need them, you have to call them. So there's different ways that you could um, ask. The simplest and easiest way is just saying, S'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît, and that will get their attention. Or you could say, madame, Ma madame, if you're talking to a woman, monsieur, serveur, a waiter, serveur, serveurs, waitress. So you could do that and call them that way. Um, for whatever reason, people, Americans often say, hey garçon, and you don't say that. It's like, hey boy, hey little boy. <laughs> but no, you don't really use that. You don't say that. The easiest thing is just, hey s'il vous plaît. They know that you're calling to them and then you're going to say, hey, by the way, uh, I need mustard, or hey, can I get some extra bread or some water? Can I get my check, please? Hey, l'addition, s'il vous plaît. Merci. L'addition, s'il vous plaît then that's actually how you ask it. You're just asking for the addition, the adding of everything that you've consumed. So l'addition is the way you would ask for your check. And that's so simple, just say, l'addition s'il vous plaît. <laughs> I mean, you literally you can go to a French restaurant and know those two words and for the rest, just point at what you want 
and probably order. <laughs> but anyway, bottom line is that you want to be able to really um, be aware that the meal is gonna take longer. If you need something, you're gonna ask them. So when you're asking for water, they may think you're really wanting bottled water. It could be the most expensive bottled water they have. Who knows, you know, whether it's sparkling, l'eau pétillante, l'eau plate, like regular water, um, flat water as they call it. <laughs> but um, if you want tap water, which I recommend, like I honestly always get tap water in French restaurants because the water there is pretty decent. And if you're in a place like somewhere in the Alps or by the French Pyrenee Mountains, the water is actually so much better than it is bottled. Un peu de l'eau, s'il vous plaît. Très bien, une petite ou une grande bouteille, monsieur Euh, non, de l'eau normale. Ok, une vitelle, c'est parti. Non, 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 une carafe d'eau, quoi. Little side note, but when I was younger, we would actually go swimming in the Perrier ponds. You've heard of Perrier water, I bet. Well, I grew up five minutes from the factory, and so they had these ponds where they would actually collect the sand to make the bottles, and I would go swimming there with my friends when I was a teen. But yeah, you can ask for tap water if you want, you know, and I'm providing a few videos that actually are showing you how some of this is done. But you know, just whatever, regarding your preference, you can have tap water or not, it's up to you. So now let's talk about customer service, or lack thereof. Well, I kind of joke about it, being both French and American and understanding both cultures pretty well, uh, there is definitely a discrepancy between French customer service and American customer service. And Americans, woo, you guys win for customer service, I'm not gonna lie, and marketing. But um, it, with the French, in restoration, so restauration, I don't know if you can say that in English, but anyway, and with food, in restaurants, it's the same thing. It's kind of a hit or miss. So you can have a great waiter that's polite, that serves you on hand food, who makes all these accommodations for you, that does a bunch of cool stuff, and you connect with him or her, and awesome, but you may not have that at all. You may have a really rude waiter who really doesn't give a and it's just like, hey, whatever. So check out this little video clip of our famous, one of my favorite actors, you know who it is, Louis de Funès, and his experience in this restaurant. Excuse me, but I have reserved a table for me. I'm Mr. Young. Allez, posez vos fesses dans le coin là-bas. I will, you, please. Thank you. J'écoute. Salad of tomatoes and a entrecote bordoules. Avec du Coca-Cola? Oh, 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 no. With Beaujolais Nouveau. Au fond du couloir à gauche. Vous suivez les mouches. Thank you. Now, is that hilarious or not? Why this might be a little exaggeration at this point, you're like, I don't even want to eat at a restaurant in France. It's a little exaggerated, but again, it is hit or miss on the quality of service that you're going to get. So I promised you I'd give you a little tip here. And the thing is, what you want to do to check out if a restaurant is good, see what kind of reviews they have or whatnot in France and other French speaking countries in Europe, is to check out TripAdvisor. So Europeans in general tend to use TripAdvisor way more than they would use Yelp. So look at a French TripAdvisor, I'm providing you the link below if you're at a restaurant to see what other people are saying. So two ways to find a decent restaurant in France. The first one would be to simply ask around you. You may have friends that live there, maybe you know distant family or whatever. If you know people there, ask them. If you don't know people there, ask people in the streets, you know, wherever you're at, like to recommend a good restaurant. The second tip, and this might go along, along the lines of the first one, but most of the good restaurants are not on the main attraction areas. So I avoid touristy areas when I used to lead different tours with colleges that I taught at and we'd bring um, students abroad for trips abroad and study abroad and whatnot. I would always tell my students the same thing. I'd say, stay away from this touristy area for restaurants. Like if there's Lac de Triomphe here, you're not going to want to go to the restaurant right here because it's not going to be as good. They're used to tourists and what I'd recommend if you want something really authentic and authentic experience, go like two or three streets down and this little restaurant, hole in the wall place is going to have better food, better quality service, etc. And it's kind of funny, like if you're on a date in France, I briefly mentioned this, but the 
man is not necessarily expected to pay. So you always have a formula. If you're inviting someone at a restaurant, whether it's on a date, you're just inviting family or friends, but you're the one who is going to offer to pay, you may say that ahead of time by a simple thing of saying, je vous invite, je vous invite, I invite you. So vous is meaning plural for two people, right? For you or person that you don't really know. If you're on a date, you know the person, je t'invite, je t'invite. I invite you, or you're just talking to one person. Organise un petit resto et je vous invite tous. On a date, it's not necessarily going to be the guy paying for meals. I loved it when I moved to the States and I was like, damn, I'm getting all these free meals. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, in France, it's definitely not the way it is. And the woman may pay or may pay half of it. They just kind of discuss that, but it's just not necessarily a part of it. Ah, j'adore. C'est vrai? Ouais. Yes. Et j'ai rajouté. J'adore la musique. Peu comme ta petite pièce, Chloé. J'étais trop fort. Ensuite, je suis allé aux toilettes. Another thing I want to point out is that sometimes your table may be closer to what you're used to since, you know, again, France, Belgium, even Switzerland, they're all smaller countries compared to like the United States, trying to give like an equivalent. Well, a lot of things are smaller, including restaurants, including the tables, and including the proximity you have with other people eating. So you might be like, whoa, I am so close to the bathroom, holy crap, like, hey, um, or wow, I'm so close to this other table, or you know, it's so some stuff like that is to be a little bit expected there. Toi et moi, ça fait maintenant six mois et, et j'aimerais qu'on se fiance. Oh putain! Hey, j'ai lâché une merde là dedans. Allez pas craquer une allumette, ça a explosé. And so if you have an allergy or an intolerance or simply a dislike and you want to request it, they may not necessarily provide that. So I would just ask them if you really, especially if you're allergic to something, just ask them what you could possibly eat out of the menu. And knowing obviously words pertaining to your allergies, dislikes, you know, then all of that is really useful to learn in this kind of instance. So you can see some places will accommodate you great and they'll like, you know, do all this stuff. You may have an experience in a restaurant where they are offering you free drinks maybe or free shot at the end or digestif, like a digestive. Uh, maybe the owner makes it and is proud to like have you taste it or some dessert. So that could happen definitely, but on the, you can't necessarily expect it. A lot is going to depend on the type of restaurants. And there are some cool hole in the wall places that aren't really nicely decorated, but the food is authentic and yummy and whatnot. And then other really like prestigious restaurants like Vatel. My mom invited me to Vatel when I got my French baccalaureate, the baccalaureate exam, because that was like the fancy French restaurant to eat at Vatel. And it was like, ooh, so nice. So there are different restaurants and different types of restaurants. So tipping is not mandatory. So a waiter or waitress's salary, their income does not depend entirely on your tipping. It's a factor that helps and it is appreciated, but it's not mandatory. They always assume that an American tourist will tip because they know that. So they almost expect it. And if you clearly are, um, it's obvious that you're an American, they may anticipate that you're going to be leaving something, but it isn't necessary or necessarily mandatory. Another thing too is that if you only have coins, whether it's like a euro, two euros, or maybe it's even like change, you could leave that as a tip and that would be okay. I know that it's not really well seen in the States. I learned that the hard way when I started leaving my quarters and didn't realize that you couldn't really do that. Oh, regardez, il a laissé deux euros de pourboire. Obviously, your experience is going to very much depend on where you eat and just like everywhere, there are huge gaps in the different quality and types of restaurants. Most restaurants make their stuff from scratch. So it would be very uncommon to have something that even the bread wasn't made from scratch or at least bought, purchased from like a local bakery. They do that a lot as well. So that's something that's really good to know. They usually hire professional chefs that have gone through schooling. They actually get paid to be a chef. They get paid, like, it's not much, but I think they get paid like 500 bucks a month to go to school to become a chef, which takes about six months and they specialize in a certain um, specialty or they specialize in something. But um, they usually will hire chefs that have gone through that process. Occasionally you might have just like a Pama restaurant. They started up, they're good cooks and you know, or two brothers, we knew two brothers at this amazing restaurant um, with like by the beach with a pool, like incredible. And they hadn't necessarily gone to school for it, but they also hired people that had a certification for being a waiter, waitress, or you know, a, a chef. In terms of pricing, the pricing is really going to vary. I can't compare it to, I've been to 24, 25 different countries and I say that every country I've been at or I've visited always had 
different types of restaurants. Some that were more expensive than others. So in France, I can't say it's more expensive or less expensive. It just depends on so many factors, where it's located, and so forth. Oh. <laughs> now let's talk about eating at a fast food restaurant in France. It resembles a lot most fast food plus re restaurants around the world. So, you know, whether it's a drive through that you have, le drive, they just call it a drive. You might have checked out our video that we did specifically showing you going through a drive through at McDonald's in France. McDonald's in France is so much different than McDonald's in other places or in the States. It almost resembles more of a Starbucks. It's a little bit more quaint, so to speak but they also had a different menu. While there's not as many fast foods in Europe as a whole, um, there are a few chain restaurants such as McDonald's, KFC and whatnot that they have, Burger King that they have in Europe, but then they have a, a few in France that are specific fast food chains that are specifically for France. That's Quick, Quick, <laughs> Quick, and Flunch. Flunch, like lunch, flunch, flunch. <laughs> Those are the two that are really specific to France. So at a fast food restaurant, they may even be less polite than a normal restaurant. At this point, you're saying like, why in the heck would I even eat at a French restaurant? Well, let me say that the quality of food resembles none other and that the food itself is so exquisite and so delicious that it is worth it to go to a restaurant and just have like this taste, like this authentic food and different regions all have different traditional dishes so it's definitely worth experiencing different restaurants the experience in itself is fun and it's also a cool place to be able to just hang out with friends because you know that you're not rushed you're not just going there to eat you're going there for the entire experience whether it's the decor or they're just hanging out with your friends casually maybe it's something more formal that you're celebrating but you know that you can hang out for hours and you're not rushed and then obviously you're enjoying everything you're eating whether you're just doing a simple dish or whether you're doing like a five six seven course meal um it just it's a great experience, so I recommend it. But it is true that overall, again, I'm comparing a lot to what I've seen in the United States, uh, even if I only live there as an adult. The thing is, like, I see that definitely fast food restaurants, they could be rude. It wasn't our experience when we went through the drive through that we just went through at McDonald's. That was not our experience, but it could be. Actually, my first job was working at McDonald's only for six months when I was like 18. But uh, this little video clip is so funny. It's from, it's called Francois Lambrouille. Francois Lambrouille is a Belgian. And he is purposely for this like hidden camera being rude with his clients that are ordering food. And it's just hilarious because it's so exaggerated. But you got to check this out. Avec menu pepper, avec géant, ça veut rien dire. What do you think? That was funny, right? So that may not necessarily be your experience. I'm not saying like this, they're going to be rude. This was for a hidden camera. That's what he does. It's awesome. But um, just expect that they may not over accommodate. So if they got your order wrong and they gave you Sprite instead of 7-Up or, you know, whatever, uh, Fanta instead of Orangina, whatever, then they may not make that right. They may, just, like, usually they will, okay? I don't want to say they're not going to, but if you're expecting for them to make everything perfect, they may not just be like, hey, sorry, this is what we have. Or like, hey, I ordered, like, fries, not potatoes. Well, sorry, ran out of potatoes, so you're getting fries. <laughs> that kind of thing could happen. May not, but could. So just be aware of that. So hopefully those tips will help you when you're eating out in a restaurant or fast food restaurant in France, Belgium, Switzerland, different French bean countries around the world. Make sure you give this video a little thumbs up. Thanks for supporting my channel. A bientôt les amis.